What's going on everyone? Today we're going to talk about the new releases by Tamron, the 35 to 150 mm F2 to 2.8 Di3 VXD and 28 to 75 mm F2.8 G2. The 35 to 150 is an interesting lens. It's the first F2 to F2.8 mirrorless lens. It starts off at a rather normal focal length of 35 mm and ends up at a rather long 150 mm semi tele photo focal length. At this moment in time, we have a lot more information about the lens. Wow. It has BBAR G2 coating, moisture resistant construction, fluorine coating, zoom lock switch, hood locking mechanism. It's one of the newer design lenses that has improved ergonomics according to Tamron. It also has a proprietary software tool, Tamron Lens Utility, where it can change the focus ring to control aperture. How this differs from the Sam Yang is that there's a dedicated AF MF switch. I imagine this will enable the lens to have a more polished feature set. It has custom switches 1, 2, and 3 and doesn't use a dual purpose switch. There is a lot more information we know about this lens now. It has 21 elements in 15 groups with a minimum object distance of 0.33 meters or 13 inches on the wide end and 0.85 meters or 33 inches. 0.5 inches on the telephoto end. The minimum object distance is interesting. 13 inches from 35 millimeter is not particularly close, but it's not bad either. 85 centimeters at the telephoto end, I think that is pretty good. We finally get the filter size, which is 82 millimeters, and I was wrong in my previous video. The length of this lens is 6.2 inches, so it's almost an inch longer than the 2470 G Master and nearly two inches shorter than the 70 to 200 G Master. It's about half an inch shorter than the 70 to 200 F. 4G lens. It has a maximum width of 89 millimeters, which is about one and a half millimeters more than the 2470 G Master. This is a big boy. This lens comes weighing in at 1165 grams or 41.1 ounces. It's a good bit heavier than the 2470 G Master and a good bit less than the 70 to 200 G Master. So the marketing for this lens is that this will be a travel lens and I'm not really seeing that being that it's nearly 1200 grams and for folks like me who are on a daily rice diet this might be too much for travel. However I do think this will be a fantastic portrait lens. 85 millimeter f2.4 or even f2.8 should get you pretty good blurring ability. And in my case the Panasonic AF is giving subject blurring abilities. Are we there yet? Okay. So it's not gonna be a problem as long as you focus on what is intended, right? At 150 millimeters, there should be a lot more background blurring abilities, even at f2.8. Here I am at 150 f3.6 equivalent. There's also the isolation factor. All the junk of my house is out of the scene. You can't see it. There's a table there and there's a, it's just a total mess. Having the dual linear focus motors, AKA VXD, I think this lens will be a serious consideration for event photography. Dealing with events in large spaces like a church or a hall, I don't find wide lenses especially useful, even for group photos. 35 millimeters in a big hall is very easy to do group photos. What about sports that you can get close to the sideline action? Take tennis, you can grab the whole scene and then get close-ups. You've got volleyball where you could grab the action scenes like a dig really wide and then get up close to a spike and the blockers. You've got basketball where you could get right under the hoop where 35 millimeters will be fine. And then you got further distances like a three point shot. And then you got badminton and ping pong widely considered the best sports of all time according to Asians. With the starting point of F2 to F2.8, even if it was only 2.8 all the way through, I think this lens can realistically replace two lenses at the same time. If you pair it with an ultra wide lens like a 17 to 28 f 2.8 or 16 to 35 2.8, you can essentially cover from ultra wide to telephoto in 
two lenses and with your slowest aperture being f 2.8 sure it's larger than it needs to be and at the end of the day i'm still married to the same old woman but who am i kidding this lens is just so appealing and i'm only human there's only so much i can resist for the distinct purpose of this lens i think the size will be quite all right this lens is long wide and heavy yes i'm compensating don't judge me Think of it this way, if you're using three or even two lenses right now, you can reduce that to two and one respectively. And before going further, be sure to like my sponsor of this video, Mr. Absolutely Nobody. Thank you so much. As for the price of this lens, I'm really hoping it comes in at $14.99. At that price point, it would hurt a lot less than say $19.99. It looks like to be a marvelous lens, However, I don't think people are willing to pay that much more for a third-party lens. For the 28 to 75, I imagine it'll come in at 899, and the current one will be discounted, sold off, and maybe discontinued. Next up is the 28 to 75. The G1 was quite all right, very reliable, and I've been happy with the output for as long as I've owned it. And so this lens will be nearly a mirror copy. 67 millimeter filter thread, 540 grams, 4.6 inches. It's basically the same thing. This lens has the BBAR G2 coating, moisture resistance construction, and fluorine coating. It's missing the zoom lock, which would have been much nicer. Aside from that, Tamron has already shown the MTF charts for this lens. And I have a breakdown on my YouTube channel and the video is going to be up here somewhere. To sum it up, the lens should rival or exceed anything currently on the market, including Sigma, Sony's G Master and Tamron's very own G1. This lens will also have a customizable button and work with Tamron lens utility for additional features. So this lens also has a minimum object distance of 0.18 meters or 7.1 inches, and it is a small improvement on the previous lens. Both could already focus fairly close. The telephoto end can focus to as low as 0.38 meters or 15 inches with a maximum magnification ratio of 1 to 4.1, which is quite good. So this lens is also redesigned for improved operation and ergonomics. It has the shiny, glossier look to it and has a better grip pattern for the zoom and focus mechanisms. So if you're looking for an evolutionary improvement to an already good lens, the Tamron G2 is for you. That's all I have for updates. Hope you enjoyed it. Like, sub, share. See you in the next one.